So for Solomon, um, Solomon was highly pro productive. Uh, in Kings or, or in Chronicles, when, when, when you see how the, um, the tribe of Israel and the tribe of Judah is being separated, uh, according to, to them, God didn't separate them. It was going to happen naturally. Okay. So you have, uh, uh, the, the people are answering back to Rehoboam, uh, saying, you know, well, why should we follow you? Okay. So it, it, it comes up how Solomon conducted business. Uh, Solomon, uh, Solomon, Solomon corrected people with whips and everything. I mean, he 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 was a highly productive man. This is the same man in Proverbs that that, that says to drive out error in a person, you have to put a rod to their back. Okay, he is the one who who wrote that. So to let you know just how Solomon believed in getting th things done. Okay, he really believed in getting th things done at any cost. Okay. So um, I'm bringing that, that up to, to say how when Jesus bring, brings up uh, Solomon, he says, and yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one, one of these. So Solomon is the one who had, you know, gorillas in, in his throne room, uh, the layers, the platform that led up to his throne. He had lions on one side, lions on, on, on another. That's how Solomon did um, it, it, it also, sidebar, it, it lets, it lets people of faith know being flamboyant is not a sin. Okay. Being flamboyant is not a sin. You could be flamboyant and still be, be in faith. Okay. My goodness. I'm saying that because our parents and our grandparents generation, they, they believe that every other thing, what, what was a sin. Only sin is sin. Okay. Just because someone do something differently than you does not make it a sin, okay? So Solomon was very flamboyant, okay? So um, so Solomon was very decorative, very, I mean, he had that juice, man. I mean, goodness, please. He had whole cities to store his, his horses, whole cities. The, the city would, would be no use but to store his uh, uh, droves and droves of, of uh, uh, horses, okay? So, Jesus is saying uh, in verse 29, he says that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one, one of these. God, Jesus is saying, God can take care of you better than Solomon could have taken care of himself. But you have to allow it. You, you, have, you have to be in faith. You have to be in faith, okay? So, uh, Jesus is saying this to the Hebrew people who are in slavery by, by the Roman Empire, okay? So, all they know is, you know, one, they haven't even heard the word. There, there has been a pause for 400 years since Malachi of hearing the word of, of God. So, now, Jesus himself, quite... Briefly, uh, uh, John, John uh, the Baptist had at his ministry. Then Jesus picked up his ministry and took, took it further because Jesus was submitted to the John the Baptist. So John the Baptist was Jesus' pastor. Okay? You cannot, no one is to, to submit to you unless you are submitted. That goes for even husbands. Okay? Don't talk about how much you want your wife to, to obey when you're not submitted to anyone. Okay? Ugh. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll leave that alone. All right, so uh, in verse 30 says, Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass in the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, uh, uh, he, he not much more clothe you, O ye of, of little faith. Now, 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 now Jesus is refer, referring to the morning dew, watering uh the, the the grass so so the even the grass is receiving their daily bread if it rains or not they still receive their morning dew so uh they they, they receive uh water even if, if it doesn't rain they still receive water and then 
he says, and tomorrow is cast into the, uh, the, the uh, oven. R referring to when the sun rises, it dries up the moisture, it even dries up the, the uh, grass. And then, uh, then, then he says, uh, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little, little faith? What he's trying to get the point across to them, see, the people still have a uh, slave mentality because of the oppression. Their ancestors were oppressed. They are oppressed. Jesus, who grew up in the oppression, yet he wasn't oppressed. He grew up in it because oppression is a state of mind. Oppression is a state of mind. Um, uh, one of, of, of our young ladies in the, the, the singles ministry, I, I don't know if, if, if this was the first time I, I, I saw this from her or, or not, or, or for someone off, the, off of Instagram, uh, someone uh, posted something about those who may be dealing with a domestic violence situation while still being in quarantine. And it's like, whoa, that haven't even crossed my mind. It's like oppression doesn't take a day off. <laughs> oppression doesn't take a, 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 a day off, okay? So it starts with the mind. OK, so and 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 Jesus ends that verse with, oh, ye of little faith, because it's a faith issue. It's a faith issue. Your oppression is a faith issue. OK, it's because they may control your your physicality or your your goings and your comings, but they cannot your mind. Your mind is about your mentality. Okay, it still goes back to you. Okay, it, oh ye of little, little faith. Okay, I it, it, it just annoys me so much when uh, you you you've been in service. You know, let let us say on, on a Friday night, you've been in service. You, you know, good talk playing, everything. Worship is high. The word was good, whatever. And then and you come out, and then as you walk into to the car. People still talking that same old mess. It's like, wait, what, what, why did we just go out, uh, go through all of that if you're not going to believe? Okay. <laughs> if you're not going to believe, you're wasting people's time. You have got to believe. Jesus says, oh, ye of look, little faith. Okay. You're doing all these rituals. You're doing all these ceremonies. You're, you, you, you're, you're, you're logging in for this service, that service, that, that service, but yet you still have uh, you still you still owe ye of little, little faith. It's like no, all these activities you're doing for 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 church it needs to be building on something, building on something. So when the activities and the ceremonies done, that's when the real work begins. Is is what you put into it. Okay, you have to desire your spiritual growth more than your shepherd. Okay, if your if your shepherd desires it more than you. You, 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 have, you have an uphill battle to fight, okay? Because it, it, it's all in the mentality, okay? All right, let, let's go on to verse 31. It says, Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall ye eat, or what shall ye drink, or where, wherewithal shall ye be, be clothed? That's God's problem. Now, I mean, you have to... Let's repeat after me. That is God's problem. Release yourself. That is God's problem. Okay? That is God's problem. What you will eat, what you will drink, and what you will wear. That is God's problem. Okay? Because every kingdom has a government. So, just, just like everyone's ears ha, ha, is perked up for, 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 for the $2 trillion uh, uh, stimulus package that, that has, has been approved and, and everything... Everyone's ears per perked up. Number one, have you thought about how that's go going to get paid back? That's just uh, that's a thought. And two, it's the government's job to take care of its people. I'm not talk talking about whatever this is. I'm talking about the kingdom of God. Okay? In Isaiah 63, it says that his, in the government, the government, 
Singular, the government shall be upon his shoulders. Meaning Jesus is the one who's carrying the government of the kingdom on his shoulders. Because if he can carry it, he can fulfill it. <laughs> if he's carrying it, he, he can fulfill it. He don't need anybody's uh, uh, a, 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 a approval because the Father and the Son and, and the Holy Spirit are one. They are one. Okay? God takes counsel. God takes only God only takes counsel with himself. Okay? So, yeah, let's, 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 oh ye of little faith. That, that, that's why we're doing the, the, these videos, okay? To just bring some enlightenment and what Jesus, what he said and what, what, what he meant. And we're, and we're going upon it line, line upon line. Amen. Amen. So in verse 32, it says, for after all these things do the Gentiles seek unbelievers. He's not referring to white. <laughs> He's not referring to the Samaritans. He's referring to unbelievers. People who, who, who's not in covenant. The ones who don't know any better are the ones who seek the, the, these things. For your heavenly father know, knoweth that ye, ye have need of all these things. He knows you need a car. He knows you need clothes. He knows you need food. He knows you, you need employment to start out with. Okay? He knows that. Okay? But here is the, uh, 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 here's the number one verse in the entire Bible. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added un unto you. So let's uh, break uh, Matthew 6, 33 down. But seek ye first the kingdom of, of God. So, but seek ye first, meaning it's up to you. You have to make the first move. You have to make the, the first move, okay? It, it's, it's uh, you know, I, I, I understand what, what folks mean by it, but, you know, show up to church, eh, I need a word, I, got, I need a word. It's like, yeah, that, that, that's true. We, we, we all, all need, need a word and everything from, from a day, day to day, time, time to time, okay? But are you seeking the kingdom? So here's the question. How do you seek the, the kingdom? You seek the kingdom by, no, number one, research the term kingdom. Research it. As uh, my, my, my guy Quentin Richardson says, it's Googleable. <laughs> Google the word kingdom. Research what a kingdom is. So you have your, your, your concept of God, and now you're learning about the concept of a kingdom, and then you put the two together. Say, whoa, so God is supposed to do this and this and this and this and this and this and this. Yeah. Then after you, you research kingdom, research the word government. So wait, God is supposed to do this and this and this. and this. These are the benefits that I have by being in covenant with him. Absolutely. Absolutely. So the next thing you're, you're going to uh, say is after you learn all this is how come no one ta taught us this? Because he says it's up to you, but, it's, but ye, but seek ye first, ye first. You have to do it. OK, stop putting your spiritual growth off on your shepherd. He's there to address he or she is there to address everyone. But the real work is up to you, is up to you. Is up to you. Uh, NBA players, for, for, for an example, you have practice and then you have the workouts before practice and the workouts after practice. Those are voluntary. You have the official practice, but what, what you do before practice and what you do on uh, after practice and what you do on your off day, whatever that, that may mean, means to you, that's what you got to do. Okay? Yeah. You should get to a point where, and, 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 and I know folks isn't going, going to like this. You should get to a point where you're putting in so much work, you're sitting in church almost bored. <laughs> oh, I know people ain't going to like that. You should get to a point where you're putting in so much work in your spiritual growth that you're sitting in church bored. Okay? Because you have to move from being... Uh, handheld all, all the time and eating out of someone's hands all the time. You got to take control of your spiritual growth. Okay. All right. I should, should move on. So it says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So 
as as uh, my guy Will asked me at, at a at a, a Kingdom Prosperity session, asked me before, he said, "Well, what is righteousness? Righteousness is um uh, righteousness is not a spiritual word. Righteousness is actually a legal word. It means in right standing. Okay, so every government has laws. The Bible has laws." So, okay, so let, let, let's say you, you live in Seat Pleasant, Maryland. Okay, fine. When you're driving down the road and the light turns from yellow to red and you make a complete stop at the red light, you are now declared righteous. Why? Because you obeyed the law. Okay? You have to obey laws. That's how you uh, can, can, can declare your righteousness. Okay? So... Everyone, a lot of people are talking about grace that we totally downplayed the purpose of laws. Grace is an addition to laws because once you know you cannot keep a law, that's then that's when grace comes in. You do not use grace as a, an excuse to sin or break a law. You need the laws. And then as an addition, and, and, and again, I'm not referring to cer cer ceremonial laws, okay? Le 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 Levitical laws. I'm, I'm not sacrifices and stuff like that. I'm not re referring to that at all. I'm talking about the basic <clears throat> governance of the kingdom of, of God. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not uh, steal, okay? The basic governance. Because those laws are there to protect you, actually. God doesn't receive an endorsement per, per, per se by, by you doing what, what it is you, you are supposed to be doing. Because they're there to protect you. It wasn't until it, it, it was two million people surrounded by Mount Sinai that laws had to be declared. They were always there, but he had to formally present them to uh, the lawgiver and, and the lawgiver uh, uh, stand there in an endorsement of what God what was uh, saying. Okay, so that's what that's that you need to know the law. You need to know the word of, of God. So when you're standing in 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 a correct alignment to what God's laws are, this is the benefit. He says, and all these things shall be added unto you. What things? Your food, drink, uh, your heart's desires, <laughs> everything you, 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 you've been pray, praying for in God's will. This, you have that. Even the things you haven't even thought about. The things that haven't even crossed your mind. Now they come to you. Amen. So all you have to do is uh, study, practice, and uh, repeat on being obedient. Be knowledgeable and be obedient. And your life will change. Your life will, will change. We don't spend enough time on, on, on Matthew 6, 33. Okay? Amen. But seek ye first, which means the, the, uh, the, the priority, everything is activated with you seeking. If you're not seeking and you're just waiting for everything to be, be given to you, no. No. Nothing is going to be. Stop waiting for, for people to give things to you. Okay? Seek. Seek. And you'll, you'll be amazed while you're seeking how all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. Amen. As, as the Godfather says, uh, the harvest is right on time. <laughs> the harvest is right on time. You got to get in position to, to receive. Get the seed in the ground. The harvest is right on time. Amen. And in closing, it says, take therefore no thought for tomorrow for Oh, uh, I'm sorry. For therefore, in Matthew six thirty six, there take therefore no thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought of things for itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil that thereof. So each day is its own containment. It's wrong and ungodly to just worry about the next day. Okay, because each day, uh, as David says in Psalms, each day we're we are loaded with benefits each day. Each day has its own benefits. So it has each day has its own evil and it has its own benefits. To 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 think get in a oh, hall tomorrow, 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 tomorrow. No, 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 no. No, no, no. No, don't don't even worry about that. It's because that is what causes worry. 
Okay? Because worry is when you're trying to take care of something or dwell on something that you cannot control. You cannot control. If you can't do anything about it, leave it alone. Give it to the Lord. Give it to the Lord about face and walk away from it. Amen. Amen, y'all. So uh, another installment of uh, all the answers to life. <laughs> Jesus is just breaking down how he can make everyone's life so much easier. So, amen. So, so well, let us end with, with a quick prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, we, we, we thank you for everyone that, that has, has tuned in today, Lord. I, I lift them up in prayer, Lord. May, 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 your, may your grace and mercy fall upon them like dew, like rain, Lord. And may the greatest days still be ahead of them, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, now, I'll see you next week. God bless. Bye.